So hello and welcome by EA's Art Channel. My name is Jelke Jan Wiersma and today we're going to talk about a painting. And uh, I will show it uh, to you guys in a minute because um, uh, normally I have the painting sitting next to me or behind me. Uh, but this uh, paintings, uh, th these two paintings, uh, upcoming paintings, today is one of them, are quite large. They are about 100 by 120 centimeters. And there is, uh, those are the, the largest canvases I ever worked on so far. So, uh, and they take up quite a lot of space. And last week, or um, this, this week, uh, um, I was uh, redecorating my art studio, so I needed uh, the room. And uh, so I had to put those paintings out. They are both finished now, and uh, like I said, we're going to start uh, working and, and talking about one of those. But um, yeah, I had to, to put them out, so therefore I don't have the intro as, as usual. But, and I did forget to mention, but these uh, two paintings are now currently hanging in the canteen of our bird shelter. But um, I'm going to go to the side a little bit, um, because I think if I would have the painting next to me, it would kind of look like, like this. Um, and yeah, so it wouldn't f fit in the screen uh, completely because it's just too big. So therefore I'm going to stick with uh, with this picture. It's a close-up of uh, her head. And uh, there's, uh, as you uh, saw, a lot of more of, uh, about this painting. But this uh, is a kind of nice shot to work from uh, for this intro, I think. Um, and also we're going to meet uh, our model for the day. This is also something new. i never done that before. But uh, this is actually the heart of my parents. And her name is Lotta. And our horse is uh, called Livke, and she will be up uh, probably next week. There's a lot of uh, to work on this tutorial because I have a lot of footage because it took uh, quite a long time to finish these paintings. But I try to upload that to one next week. Uh, so today we're going to talk about Lotta. And I have to say before I'm going uh, to show you Lotta so you can meet her, uh, it's, it's all basically always very windy here. And uh, if I'm uh, saying windy, I, I I actually mean windy because, uh, well, I have a little clip for you guys to uh, indicate how windy it can be here. And when I say it's windy, I mean it's windy. It's not a storm yet, but it's windy. <laughs> so yeah, if I would uh, continue to film um, the horses like this, you probably wouldn't hear a word I was saying. Or uh, at least it was very noisy and, and, and I don't like the noise. I love the, the wind, but not in these tutorials, it's just too noisy. So therefore I put over a, uh, a voiceover over um, the parts where I'm going to show you um, the Excel model for today. And before I'm go going to do that, it's also a time where I am focusing on the, the element I'm going to paint. Obviously I do know the horses, these horses quite well. They will uh, turn 17 this year. And uh, so that's, it's on the old side of uh, for horses, especially for freezing horses. They are get uh, around the age of 20. So they are now uh, getting uh, quite older. But I know them, uh, I see them daily. I see them um, more more times during the day because I feed them. I, I uh, go uh, take walks on them and put them outside, etc. Um, but I so I know the, the 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 general bone structure of these horses and also the muscles. I know, for example, uh, uh, that um, the the look they have, they are uh, the look they can have, who are uh, for me are very typical for these horses for for Lotta. Uh, I don't mean the Frisian horses in as a breed, but uh, these these personal horses. And also my own horse has is quite a rounded shape, and we will see that next week. Uh, this horse uh, isn't um, that much rounded shape, but she has that calm in in her uh, eyes, and I will show it in the in the picture, so you can see it. I hope you can see it. I think it's quite difficult because um, when you don't see the horses uh, very often, they are probably just beautiful black horses, and that's it. But there are some elements that I recognize, and those elements I want to put in my painting. So uh, that's the the the. the um, process before the painting. Just study your optic. This is basically what I'm trying to say. So while we're watching the horses walk around, you may want to watch uh, um, yeah, how they move and that sort of things. Well, uh, enough uh, said, I think. Uh, we're now going to meet uh, our model for the day and then I'm going to start the tutorial. I hope you like this. The first thing they like to do when they uh, get in the paddock is uh, laying down and rolling in the sand and in the mud. And it's actually good for the skin and for the fur, but it uh, doesn't show up as nicely on the, in the video. But yeah, anyhow, they like it. And here uh, we have the uh, big pool of water. 
And this is Lotta, she's very excited to uh, go through the water and uh, walk around. It's good for the exercise. And here I have a little slow motion. Just look how beautiful these Frisian horse walk. I really, really enjoy it. And this is uh, very nice. You can see now how the water is moving when she's running through the water, how she self is moving. And this is the, uh, the trot and she will now go uh, into uh, galloping. She will switch any minute and here she goes. Look how beautiful. I think it's really, really stunning. And especially in slow motion, you have the time to really watch how that big body is moving and everything uh, have, um, yeah, it's basically moving. And uh, she is using that full body and uh, it looks really, really great. And a little jump there. That was all I get this uh, today. But uh, yeah. Like I said, they love the water. They uh, run in and out of water, and sometimes they uh, lay in the water or splash in the uh, water with their feet. And after exercising, we have a little fun cooling down. And uh, that's what you're seeing here. Well, actually, it's a cooling down for them, but it's more a warming up for me because they take very big steps. <laughs> And before I started painting, I uh, sanded this canvas down. I uh, really want to have a smooth canvas, and uh, especially for the airbrushing in the background. There are, those are quite large areas, and I want to, uh, to give that a very nice, smooth look in the end. So therefore, I needed a very smooth canvas to, be, to begin with. And uh, so I said I uh, sanded it down. And it really, I really liked it, especially uh, of, uh, also for the uh, for the paint. It goes on very nicely, and uh, yeah, I personally really prefer that. So therefore, I like to send down my uh, canvases uh, most of the times. And now I'm just blocking in where things should go. I'm not uh, uh, very uh, precisely, but I'm just blocking in, like I said, d just to uh, not lose all the lines. I don't need uh, many lines because I uh, I know these animals quite well, so I know uh, how the structure basically goes. But um, even though I have a reference uh, picture, of course, to help me out, but I uh, in the beginning I just uh, have to um, need some lines to know where uh, approximately uh, things should go, and from there I will paint in the details. And now I'm uh, started with the airbrush. I'm just layering the colors. And especially for these big paintings, I cannot uh, say it enough, but just take your time because this, uh, this, these guys uh, took uh, quite a lot of time to finish, but that's okay. These are uh, quite a large and um, even though I didn't do it in, in quite a, a lot of time, uh, I mean by weeks, but I painted on these uh, as much as I could. So every day I did uh, a few pieces, a little areas, and that's how I built up these, uh, these paintings. And um, yeah, I try not to be um, to to finish up my project uh, too quickly. I like to watch them from a distance and uh, slowly building up, and really watch the difference in in lighter colors and darker colors, because that makes it very interesting to watch. And um, I also like the uh, out of focus backgrounds, so I overdo that a little bit with the airbrush for this particular painting. That is because I liked it. So uh, in my original painting there were more details in the background, but there was a lot going on around the horse. Uh, we have, uh, in a minute, we have water, we have trees, we have grass, we have uh, clouds and bushes in the, in the distance. So there was a lot of things going on and so therefore I like to keep it a little bit easier uh, for the eye or for the ones uh, for, the, for the viewer and um, So therefore I uh, did that part out of focus just uh, to uh, like I said to, to make it a little bit easier to watch and I'm slowly building up the water. There's a lot of different textures there and I'm not always sure what I really am painting and it may uh, sound a bit funny, but I not always notice if it was really water or maybe a sand with a little bit of water on it. I just follow the uh, main texture that I'm seeing, the main uh, structures and uh, also the uh, differences in, in colors and of course uh, lights and darks again. So I'm building up the shapes and in the end, at this stage, I can only hope that in the end it will make sense. And it did, obviously, because, um, well, yeah, obviously, it, it, that it wasn't as obviously, but you, uh, from experience, you know, if you follow your references and you keep watching them, keep building up, it will make sense. As long as you stick good to your references or um, if you don't have references, you know enough what you are painting. If you, you 
keep on working on those details it will make sense but at, in this uh, well at this stage it doesn't uh, make sense much but it like I said the few uh, the, the, the first layers so I uh, that doesn't matter that much the only thing is it's not really nice to look at so uh, while I was painting I uh, had to uh, pull myself through this and the ugly stage uh, which I uh, which most artists always have at some point in their artworks this one took a little bit longer because just the size of the painting and uh, just more work so therefore you stay a little bit longer in the ugly states but n by now i know i just have to keep on working and it will be fine eventually and i'm slowly building up the details now and i'm and that was a little bit of measuring uh if the eyes are correct in the correct place um, and I'm just slowly building up and I try to get that stru structure in there um, the bone structure on uh, from the uh, front of the head will uh, most of the times have a little bit more light on it so a slightly different color and what also is very important is uh, our her nostrils because he is uh, running so there's a lot of movement in this painting and I try to capture that and also uh, uh, in her nose because he's I think she's breathing out at this moment and her nostrils are quite big they are strong their skin there so I'm painting those in with big brush strokes and uh, to let those wrinkles uh, see in the skin are very important and those nostrils need to be open she's breathing out she's running and there's movement and uh, if you get that feeling uh, try to get it in your painting it's really really important to make uh, to make sense in your painting and as we saw the horses were uh, very uh, yeah very much moving there's a lot of water moving so so yeah this makes sense that the, her nostrils are uh, uh, bigger than when she was standing still she would uh, Oh, um, in, in, I'm, I'm referring to uh, where she was in 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 rest and just resting. She, her nostrils will will not be as big um, than than they are now in this painting. And uh, what I also like is the uh, mixing white. It's a no, the um, uh, the mixing white from uh, Liquitex. Uh, not the titanium white, I'm sorry, the mixing white, a transparent mixing white, that was the word I was looking for. Um, that, is, that lays on very beautiful and uh, especially for those little shiny parts. Also in black, I really personally like black, you, you probably know it by now, and I like to uh, paint black uh, animals, black horses in this case, but I use quite a lot of different colors. You may not notice all of them, but I'm mixing in uh, quite a lot of colors in my black to, uh, for example, browns, blues, purples, uh, it just depends on what area I'm painting, is it, it's, is it on the warm side, is it on the cool side, and also what do I personally like, because it's my painting, so I, I, I am, uh, can influence my painting. These colors are not all in my reference, but I like them, so I put them in, in my painting, I try to make that my own. And um, so I like use, using pictures, but to uh, a certain extent, then I'm going to make my own uh, out of it. So therefore I like to, uh, yeah, what I was referring to the uh, transparent mixing white and mix some colors in and you can make beautiful uh, different uh, um, lighter portions on your black because uh, like I said there were uh, there are a lot of different colors even when you're painting with black most of the times. Or let it, let it, at least let I say that those colors can help you when you're painting black. And by helping is, I uh, mean uh, not to uh, get the uh, black paint too flat. If you, for example, use a uh, Mars black, which I use for this painting a lot, straight out of the bottle, it's it's uh, a flat black color, but it's very opaque. So it was very very handy for me to work with, but I needed to uh, to mix it up a little bit. And here I'm quite r rough. I uh, had to find a nice technique to get the texture in. I didn't dis do this much water, or, or at least movement in the water before. This is the first time I'm painting this, so therefore I uh, yeah, tried different things and found the technique that uh, suited me the most. And here is Lotte. So I have to say that um, the, the thing about very big paintings for me was that I uh, really had to guide myself through the process and uh, because they are so big so you don't have uh, much nice uh, areas to look at when you start uh, starting to paint uh, those ugly states I'm talking about and uh, so that was kind of a challenge 
And what I did with these kind of the, these kind of paintings, these two paintings, was that I um, was painting, for example, the sky on one, and the basic lines are, are uh, on the horse. Uh, as I, I did it the other way around, but it doesn't matter. Then I switched to the other horse and painted the exact same things and did go a little step uh, forward. So I started uh, probably painting in uh, some details on the water. Then I switched to the other painting, painting some details on the water and switched to the horse and do some more details. And then back to the other painting. So, so you get the point. I did, uh, did switch in between those and that was uh, to get myself motiv uh, motivated to uh, finish both paintings. Because I know myself over the years now as an as an artist that um, I uh, when uh, especially with these kind of paintings I get bored, kind of bored afterwards. Not um, I'm really really happy with uh, with how these uh, these paintings um, uh, finished up. But don't get me wrong. But uh, to yeah basically saying the uh, painting the same subjects um, twice. Uh, is not as much fun like in portraits when I don't at portraits I really need something different completely different maybe some different uh, art materials as well just to get, get myself motivated again and then keep going and so therefore uh, I came up with this system that helped for me so maybe you are in a, some sort of sit situation where you have some same objects um, yeah you may want to switch between the painting so you get them finished uh, around the same time that really helped me so there was a little tip I thought would be nice to share So there was a lot of this uh, in this tutorial normally I have a little bit uh, less But I thought uh, these were kind of nice uh, things to share with you guys. I hope you liked it uh, as well um, Like I said next week will be uh, be Livka and we're going to talk about the paintings again and, uh, and a little bit different uh, things that I didn't include in this uh, tutorial. So if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't already have, please subscribe to my channel. I really like it. I, I'm really happy every time when, when I have a new subscriber. So thank you very, very much for that. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you at one of my next tutorials. Bye-bye.